I've put a fair amount of time into Icarus at this point, and I'm sure I haven't discovered everything, although I should give some credit to, uh, to my chat on Twitch because I get some information from them. But we'll, we'll call it a combined effort. Anyway, here are a few things that I've come across that you may or may not have discovered on your own, at least not yet. So hopefully you find this helpful. Leave a like and subscribe if you do. Number one. Building crop plots directly on the ground, uh, well, you know, it just doesn't quite have the nice effect that you might want it to have, because it gets, follows the terrain and it's all sort of lopsided and uneven, and maybe there's bushes that are popping up through it. But what's the alternative? I mean, you have to wait until you can make stone floors so that it's not destroyed by storms. Or do you? It turns out that if you put crop plots directly on top of wooden floors, they actually serve as a protective surface that'll prevent damage from happening to those floors. This works for the regular wooden floors. It works for interior wooden floors. So let's say you wanted to have a ceiling that actually looked nicer. You could have that, but you know, it would be on the top side protected. Looking at the test here, you can see that the platforms that surrounded the crop plots all took damage from the storm, but the one underneath is still in perfect condition. Number two, trying to figure out why your lantern has lost so much of its durability. I mean, what could possibly cause that, right? From what I've seen, the most likely cause of this is going into caves with your lantern out, and when you're trying to kill the worms, if you miss or something, you don't get your attack off in time and they happen to hit you with their poison. That is what is damaging your lantern. So if you're not careful, this can ultimately destroy the lantern completely. Number three, in a rather tragic series of unfortunate events, I discovered exactly how shelter works in relation to building pieces and to workbenches and to yourself as well. If you have a floor with a ceiling directly over it, preferably a roof piece, but another floor piece will serve until it gets destroyed. If there's a roof piece directly over a floor, it'll protect from taking any damage. It doesn't actually have to have any walls going around or anything like that. Workbenches, however, do need to have walls around them. It can't just have a ceiling or a roof above it. They will still take damage. If for some reason you're picking up items because you're trying to prevent them from being damaged, and let's say your inventory is full already, like mine was, and those benches drop on the floor, well, now they also take damage in the form of decay. And they decay very, very quickly. I ended up losing a lot of workbenches. Oof, it was brutal. And it was very triggering, but the lesson was learned. If you want to have shelter around your benches, make sure you have walls that cover at least three sides and extend out far enough. You might want to just double check this. You don't actually have to have walls going around all four sides of a bench, but they do need to go past where you place the bench by uh, maybe two more wall lengths, something like that. On a side note, the biofuel composter doesn't take any damage from anything. <laughs> it doesn't even need to be in shelter. I didn't know this at the time. Uh, I discovered that after the fact. So, in a pinch, if you need a place to store items so they don't get damaged, and you happen to have a composter on you, you could use that. Maybe in place of a fire pit or something like that. It's actually not that much more heavy than a fire pit. Number four. Going along with the concept of providing shelter and roofs protecting floors and all of that, let's say you want to build glass walls in your house. I know this is not for everybody, but let's just say you do want to do that. If you leave them up in a storm, they will take damage from the storm, and you'll end up with a bunch of broken glass all over the floor. I mean, you can repair it, but it kind of gets annoying to repair it every single time. There is a way to prevent this, though. If you take, well, any sort of floor piece, but the half floor pieces are pretty convenient and they don't look terrible, if you stick those out above the windows, those will actually serve to protect the windows from any storm damage. They will no longer take damage from storms. You might have an issue like I had here where it doesn't want to snap properly, and the way around that is if you make a wooden post and you put that along the top, you can then snap those half floor pieces on the edge of that. Number five, let's say you've killed an animal and you want to bring it back to your house in order to throw it on the skinning bench. So you go and you pick it up and you're walking back minding your own business and suddenly a predator comes running at you intent on killing you. So what do you do? If you have an item in your inventory that's deployable, like uh, a wall piece or a bench, something like that, what happens is if you right click on that item in your inventory and hit deploy, it'll kind of store the animal. You'll no longer be carrying it in your hands anyway. You can then switch to one of your weapons and be able to move. You're still gonna have the movement debuff of carrying an animal, but you at least have your hands free in order to do something. Number six, another handy piece of information has to do with splitting and moving stacks between inventories. 
If you shift click and drag, it'll split it in half. If you control click, it'll move a stack from one inventory to another inventory. If you click while holding both control and shift, it'll move all the stacks of that same item from one inventory into another. Also, if you hold down alt, you can click and drag one item at a time off of a stack. The only place I've found this to not work very well is if you're trying to pull fuel out of a furnace. I've noticed that if you take half the stack off and move it up into the inventory of the furnace and then control click to move it into your inventory, it'll just send it right back down to the fuel slot. Number seven, if you completed payday extraction, you now have access to mine exotics directly out of the ground. You'll need extractors to do this. What's nice is that these veins have a chance to have one to three snappable locations for ore extractors, which definitely speeds up the process. More extractors means bringing along more cans of biofuel, but if you remember when I talked about the biofuel composter not taking any damage from being outside, well, you can actually bring that along with you and set that up right next to the deposit and just refill the cans as you go. Another little trick too is if you want to, you could bring the fabricator bench and the necessary components to build multiple extractors on site since you can only carry one at a time in the backpack slot. This definitely saves you some time in back and forth trips. And finally, one more little trick that maybe you might know, maybe you might not. When you're hunting with a bow and you've drawn the bow back and you're getting ready to fire, but at the last second, you decide that you shouldn't fire for whatever reason. You could switch to another item in your toolbar and, and then switch back to your bow and now it's unstrung, but there's actually a quicker way. If you just tap R, that'll serve to release the tension on the bow without firing the arrow. This method also works with spears. You can also do this by sprinting all of a sudden, but of course, if you're hunting something and trying to be stealthy, then you wouldn't want to sprint. <laughs> so R is generally a better way to go. That's it for now. I hope you found these tips and tricks and secrets helpful in some way. If you did, give it a thumbs up. I stream at least four days a week on Twitch and would love to have you come by and say hello. You can find me at the link below at twitch.tv kineticghost. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.